Ha! Huh. Hey there! Blah, 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 blah. All right, welcome to your first attempt, or my, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, welcome to the first attempt at an online lab. This will sort of be an experience where we're learning together, so this lab, lab number seven, all about circular motion dealing with flying pigs. And just so you know, this lab was originally going to be a formal lab, the next formal lab. It's not gonna be formal, it's gonna be informal. And I'm just doing the very last section on flying pigs. So, here's our pig. Pig's name is Frank. Frank is going to fly in a circular path, hopefully at a constant speed. And as Frank is moving around the circular path, Let's assume he's moving at a constant speed. The speed of an object moving in uniform circular motion is given by 2 pi r divided by the period. So in this case, we can measure the period just by using a stopwatch. Oh, and Frank is a little temperamental. Go, Frank, go. So we're going to actually take data for you, tell you what the data is, and let you analyze it for it. Some of it, or actually, we're no. No, we're not. You're going to take your own data. You can use the video to figure out the period just by how long it takes this pig to go in one complete revolution. And then we're going to set it up so that you can measure the radius. So you're going to be able to figure out the speed of the pig by using 2 pi r divided by the period. That's going to be one way of calculating the speed. We also know for something moving in a circular path, John's giving me little weird smirks. I can't tell if I'm not no, speaking correctly or not. But I'm not editing this because it would take me forever to make a perfect document. We also know sum of the forces equals ma, which for something moving in a circular path is v squared over r. So sum of the forces is mv squared over r. So by solving for v, we'll have a second equation for speed. So let's come over to the board. <laughs> so for something moving in uniform circular motion, meaning moving in a circular path at constant speed v, circle of constant radius r, period t, the speed is given by 2 pi r divided by the period. We're going to call this our experimental period. We also know that for something moving in a circular path, the sum of the forces in the radial direction, which is towards the center of the circle, is going to be given by mv squared over r. So we're going to use this equation and Newton's second law, basically, sum of the forces equals ma in both the x and y directions to get a second equation for v. That's just going to be in terms of l, the length of the string, r, the radius of the circular path, and g, the acceleration due to gravity. So real quick, the setup is, and I'll probably try and also do this writing it out using a tablet, is got the pig connected to a string of length L moving in a circular path of radius R. As he's doing it, there's only two forces acting on the pig. You've got tension in the string, and you've got the force of gravity mg. If I call theta the angle between sort of the vertical and the string, then I can break this up into x and y components. And with my definition of theta being this angle here, that's also going to be the angle between the vertical and the angle the tension is making by, I don't know, alternate interior angles, one of those. So the situation is I've got t cosine theta acting straight up, mg acting straight down, t sine theta acting towards the center of the circular path. We know the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be zero because this pig is not moving up and down. Sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be mv squared over r. And that's sort of our initial setup. Now we're going to make another video and try and show you the pig so that you can make some measurements. Oink, oink. <laughs> okay, so now we have a setup. Um, Let that it... be it. Sorry, just dropped it in. I, I would go. So here is the setup of the flying pig. We basically have a pig connected via a string. 
to the top here and a few things to notice. One, as this pig is moving around in a circular path, the center of the circle is this rod, not this rod. So down where you point to the center. So it's going to be that rod, not the bigger rod. And one other thing about the top here is that when you're measuring the length of the string, you really want the length of the string if it was connected to a support at the very top. And you want to sort of show them that little piece right there, just like if the string were continued to move up. So it has a string with imaginarily make a triangle that starts up here somewhere. And I'll maybe you know, annotate this somehow, but normally the string would be connected at one point up at the top. Here, the entire thing is rotating. So when you're measuring the length of the string, one, it's going to be approximate because you're not going to be here to make the actual measurement. But uh, actually, start the pig going. We'll kind of. So we're going to do another video where we take measurements. But two things to keep in mind. One, like I was saying, the center of the path is this rod. So you're going to measure the radius relative to that. And if you look at the string, again, we'd want to imagine that string was connected at one point and we would make our measurements from that point. All right, so first to set up, John is just holding the pig still. The red pieces of tape are 10 centimeters apart, and John is holding the pig, and we're starting the first red dot there at approximately the center of mass of the pig which we'll learn in chapter uh, 11 is where we would make measurements relative to. So you've got doo -doo 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 -doo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, almost 11. Oh, that's actually, that's how many really pieces of red tape. Well, I was just looking for myself to make sure I know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can look <laughs> at how many red pieces of tape there are. Each one is 10 centimeters apart. So I'm going to give you a second or two just to look at that image. And again, we want to know the distance from the center of mass of the pig, which is basically where John is starting that first piece of red tape, up to where the string would be connected if it was connected at a single point. So meaning we don't want to measure it to where the kind of hard to do but where it is so here's how you go about measuring the length of the string L so John is holding a two meter stick there are 10 centimeter marks by the red tape every piece of tape is 10 centimeters from the one before it and John is holding the first piece of red tape at the center of mass of the pig so the length we want the length of the string is from the center of mass of the pig to where the string would be attached if it was attached to a single point up at the top. But you can kind of see we have it on a rotating, uh, I don't know what you want to call that, but pulley. rotating pulley, so it's not at a single point. But you can kind of see it looks like it would go to almost that last piece of tape if it was. So again, you want to get the length from where John is holding the center of mass of the pig to where it would be connected, each one of those red pieces of tape is 10 centimeters apart. Okay, so now here's a video of the pig in action. The pig is flying in a pretty stable circular path. What you want to get from this part of the video is two things. One, what is the radius of the circular path? Again, you're measuring that radius relative to the plumb bob where it's hanging. Two, what is the period? So what I'd recommend doing is timing the time for the pig to make, let's say, five complete revolutions, dividing that by five. So two things from this part of the video. What is the radius of the circular path? What is the period of the pig's, pig's revolution? All right. <laughs> Is there sound? Are there sound? What we're... Here's a pig. Pig has wings. The pig's name is Frank. And 